Yo, what's going on guys? It's Tyler here and today's video I mean I already came out with a pack opening today, but we're gonna be talking about the Kings firing Dave Yeager because I am a Kings fan and I'm sure you know that I say it in a lot of my videos and I feel like um, a lot of people are confused as to why Dave Yeager got fired and a lot of people are kind of clowning the Kings right now because they have their best record since uh, 2006 <sighs> 39 wins um, for about 10 years we couldn't get past 33 wins and this this year we got to 39 wins and uh, I just kind of wanted to make a video talking about why they fired Dave Yeager and why I'm okay with it. I feel like my shirt, this is like a pajama shirt. It's like a, it's a King shirt with my, under my King's jacket, just like a pajama shirt with my King's beanie on. So I just wanted to talk about why I'm like not that mad that they fired Dave Yeager because I feel like there's a lot of, the Kings being a smaller franchise, like I'm sure you could find a million YouTube channels right now talking about Magic Johnson quitting being the GM of the Lakers. But I feel like you can't find a lot of YouTube channels talking about the Kings. So I just want to go ahead and be a little, uh, I don't know. If you're a Kings fan, subscribe to my channel. Maybe I'll start talking about Kings stuff more often. Or maybe basketball stuff in general. But we're going to talk about Dave Yeager. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Dave Yeager had a weird few years with the Kings. He he played, he coached three years. And in that three years, it was really weird. Like So the first year, he gets a free pass. That was the year we traded to Marcus. You know whatever it is what it is i'm not going to hold anything against them that year the next year which would be last year um vlade drafted De'Aaron fox which is great and he was good but they also decided to sign zach randolph and george hill which didn't make much sense because we had at the time scalabissier we had willie collie stein and Zach Randolph was taking up minutes and it didn't really make much sense. Now on the flip side, we signed George Hill who was starting when De'Aaron Fox was obviously amazing from the start. Like there was absolutely no reason for us to even have George Hill, especially since we gave him $17 million a year. Obviously they realized that because they traded him and we eventually basically were forced to start De'Aaron Fox. But for a while it was like, why is De'Aaron Fox not starting? So last year as well, Buddy Heald said that he didn't feel comfortable enough to start. He wanted to come off the bench. So it's like, okay, fine. De'Aaron Fox start, like, started the last half of the year. I felt like it held the team back a little bit. Zach Randolph was still getting minutes when he shouldn't have. Didn't make much sense, but I was like, you know what? Whatever, we're rebuilding. Just get De'Aaron Fox the minutes and we're good. Just get Buddy the minutes and we're good. This year we draft Marvin Bagley and he basically comes off the bench the whole season. We signed Nemanja Bialica, who was on absolute fire for the first probably month of the season, hitting all his threes, hitting his threes like five feet behind the three-point arc, making these ridiculous passes that every Euro player makes where they're throwing it over their head and throwing it there and throwing it there. And he's good, and Bialica is a good role player, but he was on fire the beginning of the year and he pretty much sucked like the last couple months except for short spurts here and there. I mean, Dave Yeager, he kept playing him and starting him instead of Bagley. And I understand maybe it's because you want a scoring punch off the bench, but you already have Bogdan. Bogdan and Willie Cauley-Stein had great chemistry the, the, the first couple of years they played together. And then it seemed like Bogdan and Willie Cauley-Stein were hardly on the floor anymore because Willie started, Bogdan was coming off the bench which was a weird scenario, but I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here. Let's go back. Our roster was, consisted of De'Aaron at the point this year. This, this is pre-Harrison Barnes trade. De'Aaron at the point, Buddy at the two, Justin Jackson at the three, um, Bielitsa at the four, Willie Colleystein at the five, with basically Yogi Ferrell slash Frank Mason, Bogdan, uh, Iman Shumpert, coming off the bench, although Iman Shumpert would sometimes start at small forward, and then um, Bagley and Giles. But there have been absolutely so many games that we blew because Willie Cauley-Stein is not that good of a center. He's not. I'm sorry, but Willie Cauley-Stein is not very good. And you can say what you want. If you're a Kings fan, comment below. Let me know what you think about Willie Cauley-Stein. I personally think he's horrible. I think he could be so much better than he is. 
he has games where he straight up just doesn't try and you can see that he doesn't care and about halfway through the season he should have started Bagley and started Harry Giles straight up Willie Colley Stein wasn't getting it done this is a contract year for Willie Colley Stein he too started out the season amazing playing like he's never played before about the same time as as uh, Bielitsa maybe he had a little bit more of a run but he flamed out and became the same Willie Colley Stein we're used to and I know what you're asking yourself well these are players that are doing worse not the coach why are you blaming the coach well the problem is Dave Yeager wouldn't make changes in games it took him forever to make lineup changes and when he did sometimes it didn't make sense I'll give you an example of that we had so many games where Jaeger wouldn't play the guys that we needed to play to win for example take out Willie he's a bum put in Bagley or even if we're gonna lose or win whatever it is just give the young guys the minutes I hope to God the Kings do not give Willie Colley Stein an extension. Like I said, that's a whole other scenario. But it goes back to Jaeger because there's been so many times that Jaeger didn't make adjustments. And when he did, they were terrible. Now, let's fast forward to the Harrison Barnes trade. We traded Justin Jackson and Zach Randolph to the Mavericks for Harrison Barnes straight up. I don't think there was a single pick. There might have been a second round pick in there. But it was a pretty clean trade, back and forth, boom, done. Justin Jackson was good, but he the problem with the Kings roster is that we didn't have the size that we needed at the forward spot. We didn't have a true small forward, which is something that Dave Yeager complained about. He said that we don't have a true small forward. So he would play Bogdan there, he would play Shumpert there, he would play Justin Jackson there. All these guys are more shooting guards. Justin Jackson's 6'8", but he's... 80 pounds soaking wet. He doesn't have the frame to play small forward. I'm sorry, but he doesn't. Iman Shumpert, he's a little short. I think he's like 6'6", 6 6'5". 6 6 Bogdan, 6'5". These dudes cannot play small forward. I'm sorry. Bogdan might be 6'6", six six, actually. But same thing. These dudes aren't going to guard a Kevin Durant. These dudes aren't going to guard a LeBron James. These dudes are not going to be able to guard a Kawhi Leonard. And if they can, it'll be for short spurts. A Paul George, etc. You understand what I'm saying. So... We trade for Harrison Barnes. Literally, I think the first or second game we played with Harrison Barnes, after complaining all year that we did not have a true small forward, Jaeger then tr trots out a lineup of De'Aaron, Buddy, Bogdan, Harrison Barnes, and Willie. Why are you playing Harrison Barnes at power forward? He did it for a good couple weeks and didn't change it, and it was a terrible lineup when we were losing. You had, so then you had like, you, you would have like Harrison Barnes guarding like a, a, a stretch four in the corner, and then you got Bogdan Bogdanovich guarding like the, the, the star small forward on the team, who Bogdanovich has locked up forwards before like Paul George last year. He, he was locking people up last year, but it's t too tiring for him. He doesn't have the size. He has to work extra hard because he doesn't have the size. He has to rely on athleticism, which he's not the most athletic. I mean, he's a white guy. Come on. I mean, he's European, but he's white. I mean, you know. <laughs> so, the point being is, why trade for Harrison Barnes, who is a small forward? He is like the generic average to above average small forward. He's good. I like Harrison Barnes. I didn't think I'd like him, but I actually loved him on the Kings. He was a little rough when he first started, but he ended up becoming decent towards the end. And I was like, wow, I was really impressed. But Harrison Barnes, he, why are you playing my power forward? It made absolutely no sense. So then not only is he getting the Giles slash Bagley minutes at power forward, but now we still have the same small forward problem that we just made a trade to try to fix. It didn't make any sense. It literally did not make, it made zero sense. He coached the team like a guy that wanted out. And I, I mean, I liked Jaeger. I kind of liked his personality when he first came in. I'm not gonna tell you guys where I work, but he would show up at my work every once in a while. Like, I only saw him once, but people would say, oh, hey, Dave Jaeger was, I was like, that's cool. A coach, the coach comes and in, 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 to my work and, and does what he does. I'm not gonna say where I work. He shops. 
There you go. He comes to my work and shops. I'm like, wow, he shops up where I work. That's cool. You know, he got one, the one time I saw him, he was wearing a full King's warm up, Like, you know, like the, the, uh, it's got like the, the collar neck and then God, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta grow my, gotta grow my beard back. He, he would wear like the full collared thing and like the, the pant, everything, like a full warm up. But like, he didn't make sense. He would not, he actually would straight up ignore fans or media. There's like, if, say, after a game, they'd be like, wow, there's one game in particular. I can go back and find the quote. They said, Bagley has been playing amazing as of late, blah, blah, blah. Is there any consideration of starting him? He says, no, next question. Why is he like that? Why was he like that? Why was he being that way? I understand he might not want the media telling him what to do, trying to force him in this. I'm the coach. I'm going to make my decision. I understand that viewpoint. But at some point, the fans are entitled to an answer. Why was Bagley... Why wasn't Bagley starting? Bagley, Marvin Bagley was the best... Marvin Bagley averaged 2010, I think, more than... I think Marvin Bagley was in a list of like five guys. There's only been like five other guys that have averaged 20 points, 10 rebounds as many times in a season as him. Something crazy in the rookie year. Like Bagley is good. I, I, I got so mad on my old iPhone. I had an iPhone case. I had an iPhone case that was broken. I got so mad when we drafted Marvin Bagley. I punched my couch. I accidentally grazed my iPhone that was like, had a little thing on the phone case it was like cracked so it was like sharp and i was bleeding i bled from punching something because we drafted marvin bagley i that's how bad i wanted luka Doncic. i was totally on luka Doncic bandwagon i love bagley now i'm feel dumb for even being that mad that we drafted him and it just comes to like he would not make in-game adjustments he would trot out lineups like i said for weeks and just lose games awfully before he changed them we went we lost 17 of our last 26 after the all-star break we couldn't manage to get to 41 wins there was no excuse for us to not hit 41 wins no there's only two more wins than we had this year there was no excuse for it we should have made the playoffs and i do will give them that i will give them this almost every single kings game this year has been has come down to like one to probably like I'd say one to five points almost I swear to God almost every single game like they've had to fight tooth and nail every game it hasn't been like you know some of these playoff teams where they can just blow teams out put in their bench rely on their bench and rest their guys in the fourth quarter if if they wanted to win a game they would have to play their starters the whole game or close to it and I understand that part like I feel like that's part of the reason the Kings flamed out towards the end is that they're just tired like, and plus, they ran more than anybody in the NBA. I mean, at some point, you're human. I, 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 I understand all angles, but to me, the ridiculous rotations, the stubbornness, and like, I'm all for somebody being rude to the media. I love seeing Popovich do it. I love seeing Bill Belichick do it. I think it's hilarious. But Dave Yeager would ignore questions the media was asking him that really, it was the fans asking the questions. The media were just doing it for him, and he would not respond. It was just honestly as time. Vladi Divac, people rag on him for the trade that's affecting us this year, where we traded Jason Thompson, Carl Andre, and Nick Stauskas and our first round pick to the Sixers. We had so many trash players from the past that we gave the Sixers a first round pick to take our trash players because he was trying to rebuild quickly around DeMarcus. We ended up signing Marco Bellinelli and Rajon Rondo that offseason, and we went nowhere. But he was trying to rebuild quick to make DeMarcus happy. People hold that against him and say that was a terrible trade and evidence that he's a bad GM. I don't think it is. He was doing what he was trying to do to make DeMarcus happy because he's the best player we've had since Chris Webber, Peja, Mitch Richmond. You could name, you know, Vlade himself, Doug Christie, Mike Baby, Jason Williams. You could name, you know... DeMarcus is the best player we've had since, you know, for the last, in the last 15 years. And, um, he was doing what he t was going to do to make, try to make DeMarcus happy and make him stay. That didn't happen, obviously. He ended up trading him for Buddy Heald, which everybody destroyed the Kings for that trade. 
Now looking at it, even if DeMarcus never got hurt, I would be very happy with that trade. Buddy Heald is amazing. Buddy Heald got robbed of being an all-star this year. If you don't believe me, go look at the numbers. He had better numbers than Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson made it, but he should have been an all-star. Vlade Divac isn't as bad as people say he is. He drafted De'Aaron, drafted Marvin Bagley, which obviously you can say those aren't exactly, you know, those aren't, like those are pretty much home run picks. I get it. But for all we know, he could have still screwed it up somehow. He could have drafted, uh, I don't know, Noah Vonley or somebody instead of Matt Marvin Bagley, like an equivalent to Noah Vonley, somebody that becomes nothing. And he has mistakes. He drafted Papianis in 2014 or 15, whatever that was. But we also got Bogdan Bogdanovich through a trade. And as far as I'm concerned, I just count Bogdan as being our draft pick that year. Although Vlade has done some boneheaded things, I trust him. I trust that he'll get it right. I trust firing Dave Yeager. I didn't think Dave Yeager was it. I thought he could have been, but his rotations were bad and he just overall was not, he seemed like he wanted to leave and Vlade made that happen. Dave Yeager and our assistant GM Brandon Williams hated each other. Uh, they were getting into it all year. There was basically a power struggle between the two and who whose side Vlade was gonna take. Vlade fired them both. Goodbye. I'm happy that he did that. I'm happy he didn't pick one side or the other. He fired them both. And uh, Vlade got an extension. I trust him. I think that we're going to go places. I think, I truly believe, Dave Yeager is our equivalent of the Warriors' Mark Jackson. They got rid of Mark Jackson, brought in Steve Kerr, smooth sailing for the Warriors. Dave Yeager's our Mark Jackson, guys. Just think of it like that. All right, guys, well, that's the video. I know it was kind of a lot of uh, BS. And if, I mean, if you have anything you want to talk to me about, just leave a comment below and I'll interact with people. I just want to kind of get this off my chest because everybody's absolutely clowning the Kings for this trade. If you watch Kings games, it's not so black and white. Like either they're, oh, Dave Yeager was amazing. You should have kept him and you're trash because you fired him. It's not like that, man. Dave Yeager was weird. He, he had a real stubborn personality. His in-game adjustments, his, his lineups were just weird. He wouldn't give the young guys any minutes. Like we'd be struggling. We'd be doing awful. And then they'd bring in Giles and back. Oops, sorry, I hit the mic. We'd be playing awful one game, and then Bagley and Giles would be brought in like the last five minutes of the fourth quarter, and they would tear it up. And then he wouldn't give a minutes the next game. It's like, well, what are you doing? You know, it was just, I'm glad. I'm glad he's gone. That's all I'm going to say. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new. We're on the road, 900 subscribers. And um, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I love you.